Now let's go and configure our LDAP integration. I will go to my on premise instant here. Go to authentication method. Now let's go to LDAP and new LDAP. This is the on premise server. So I'll save it anything. I will put the IP address here. The default one is 389. If you want to use the secure, it's 636, which I uh, recommend in the cloud. If you are using this integration for the cloud, I, I recommend to use the 636, which is the secure uh, port. Here is the complex configuration. Uh, while you are doing those configuration, if you are not familiar with the domain controller configuration or uh, users, I recommend to consult your uh, colleagues or Microsoft colleagues to help you in those configuration. Here's the bind DN and the bind password, the username and the password to get the authentication from the Domain controller must be entered here. Uh, let me take you to my domain controller to show you what I did here. In the users, I create a Splunk user, which is a, a administrator to use it for the DN. And I have created two security groups, one for Splunk admins and one for Splunk board users. I will create a new uh, user. I will name it Splunk user. Please make sure that the groups that you want to use for Splunk uh, authentication must be with uh, users. Let me go to my presentation. Once you decide to go and use the Splunk uh, integration with the LDAB, First, on the AD, you need users and groups, and you must map the user and the groups in the AD first, then those will be used in Splunk. authentication that's why you can see here that I create Splunk user this user is a domain and it's an admin for Splunk so it will be used for the binding between the Splunk and the, and the, the LDAP. Also, it will be Splunk administrator. That's why it's a member of this group. And the user here, it will be member of this group. I will add it here. Let's go back to our Splunk instant. I already created a one for the admin. I will show you right now how to create the same for the users. 
or I can delete it, no problem. I will name it my domain controller host. It will be one eight two one nine two one six eight dot one dot one ten. I will use the port three eight nine. Now bind the end. It's the user that will be used to get the data from the domain controller. It must have sufficient privileges to read from the domain controller. To get this data, I will use the Splunk admin. Now, if you want to manage or do all those settings by yourself, please make sure that you go to your domain, right click and view, choose the advanced feature. Then go back to your user. Here is my Splunk properties. Go to member of, as you can see, it's an administrator. So it will have the right permissions and privileges to read from the domain controller. And it's in the Splunk admin group. It's not necessary to add it to Splunk admin group, but because I don't want to keep creating users, and I want this user to be a Splunk admin also. So, go to properties again, attributes, editor, <coughs> sorry. You will search for the distinguished name, the DN, view, Copy it, go back to your Splunk, paste it. As you can see here, here is the information. Type the user password. Now, what users that we want to add here? So we need to get the user's information. Go back. Here we need the users or the location for the users. So go to users or you attribute editor DN. Sorry, here it is. We will copy it and back again. Here it will ask us about the username attribute. By default, it's Sam account. I will use it here. This one also use the default CN. Now, it asks us about the group setting. It means the group that we need to uh, map it to our rules. So, go back to your domain controller. I will get the attributes and those will be the default values from here Now, this is our admin LDAB integration.
Password do not match. Now it's done, it's here. Now let's go to map groups. As you can see here. Here is Splunk admins. What do you want it? An admin. Save. Now we can go back to strategies. Now to correct things and make things better, I create an OU organization unit and name it Splunk Groups and move the Splunk Groups from here and put them in this OU. Then I copied the attribute from this group from OU to the group here and save the configuration. Now this will allow us to create many numbers of Splunk groups. As you can see here, Splunk admin, Splunk users. Let me go back. And create Splunk test. Go back. And we need to wait until it will be eventually added here. Yes, because it does not have any user. Let me create a user. Now we have also Splunk test. Why it's not here? Oh, without L. We added the user, let me check now, yes, we have three groups. Please make sure each time you create a security group in the, in the domain controller, it have users. Without users, it will not show here. Now, let's do Splunk admin, it's admin, and here's the user. Splunk users. and Splunk test. Now let me log out. I'll try to log in using the Splunk. And I logged in as a Splunk user.
And if you go here to users, you will find the admin, Splunk, Splunk test, and Splunk user. You cannot edit the LDAP users. You can only edit the local users. That's it for the LDAP integration. I hope uh, it's useful for you.